Hello and welcome to another Haas Tip of the Day. Today we're going to take the guesswork out of setting up live tools on your Haas Turning Center. So I'm excited about doing some tips on our live tool lays. But before we can make those videos, we have to show you how to set up these live tools. If these things aren't set up properly, we're going to struggle with everything else that we do. So let's head over to the assembly area where we've got a naked lathe. We've pulled off the sheet metal so you can get a better view of that live tooling. Well, we've made it back here to our lathe assembly area. We've got a lathe here with the sheet metal removed so we can see our turret better. Now this is a 12 station hybrid turret. That means that it has room for six VDI 40 holders along with six BOT tool holders. Now over here, we've got set up a VB24 turret. This is the kind of turret that you'd find on an SS machine. This one has 12 VDI 40 holders along with 12 BOT holders. Now BOT stands for bolt-on tooling because they bolt along the outside of our turret. Now what does VDI stand for? Well it's, it's German and I'm not going to try and pronounce it for you. Essentially it stands for Society of German Engineers. Now the 40 in VDI 40 stands for 40 millimeters. That just means that the shank on our VDI tooling is 40 millimeters diameter. Now these tools come in two basic flavors, axial and radial. Now our axial tools are going to drill or tap along the z-axis of our lays along with the spindle axis. Our radial tools will drill, tap, mill along the x-axis of our lathe. We're going to start off by showing you how to set up our axial tools. Now our axial tool holders are really easy to set up. In fact, from the factory, really all we should have to do is go to our offset page, highlight the tool that we're trying to line up, and press the F2 key. That's going to write the x-axis spindle center line to our offset page for that tool. Now, trust but verify. I want to make sure that that value is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a coaxial indicator and I'm going to mount it in my spindle. Now we've got an adapter here that makes this really easy. You can make one for yourself. With this adapter, we can hold our coaxial indicator in almost any size collet or even with a three-jaw chuck. Once we've mounted our indicator, we can come in and indicate off the ID of one of our VDI tooling holders. Now I like to use a boring bar holder because of its nice ground ID surface. Now you can also indicate off the outside of a pin mounted into a VDI holder or even off a tool itself. Now when this indicator is in the holder, you can adjust it up and down until you find the x-axis center line. If you happen to have a y-axis lathe, you can also make small adjustments to the y-axis to get your tools just perfect. So what if you find out that your F2 x-axis centerline value is not correct? Well, if that's off for any reason, you can call your local HFO. They can come out and change the parameters necessary to put that value back in line. OK, so we indicated off the ID of our tool holder. Why didn't I just indicate off the hole in our turret? Well, there's a reason for this. The hole in our turret is not round. It's not a circle. It's actually an oval. What we've got here is a perfect 40 millimeter hole and about a millimeter below that we've got a second larger hole that was put in for clearance. If we try and indicate off that hole we're going to have a really hard time and whatever value we get is not going to be usable for a tool offset. We must put a VDI holder into the turret and indicate off that. Now when we put that VDI tool into our turret we're going to be tightening an M10 socket head cap screw, driving a wedge up against the side of our VDI tool holder. This is going to force our tool holder up against that perfect 40 millimeter surface, as well as drive that VDI tool tighter up against the face of our turret, giving us a nice solid hold. Okay, so our axial tool holders are pretty straightforward. Setting up a radial tool holder can be a bit more complicated, but it's really important that we get this right. If our radial holders are off at all, our tool is not going to align with our x-axis. This means our tools could wear out prematurely or even break. This is why on the back of all of our radial tool holders, they've given us some set screws. Now we're going to press a 10 millimeter pin into our turret. 
then when we put our radial tools in, we're gonna have that pin sticking out that we can drive our set screws up against to adjust the angle on our radial tool holders. Now, I'm gonna grab my, my pin and some tools here, and we're gonna go ahead and drive a pin into the turret on our lathe. Now, these dowel pins actually come with your live tooling. They're typically about 28 to 30 millimeters long. Now, if you just grabbed a hammer and pounded them into the 10 millimeter hole on your turret, you might sink them in so far that there's not enough exposed pin for the set screws in your live tooling to grab a hold of. We need 12 millimeters of exposed pin for those set screws to grab a hold of. So what I've done here is grab some round stock and I went ahead and machined in a pocket, a slip fit for this 10 millimeter pin. And I made that pocket 12 millimeters deep. Now we're gonna use this as an insert tool to drive this pin into the turret. Now, when we put these pins in, we need to be careful. There's an M6 by one threaded hole on one end. This hole is so we can yank the pin out later if we have to. So when you're putting this pin in, make sure the threaded hole is facing you, not facing towards the turret. Got it? Okay, great. I'm gonna mount this in my adapter and drive in my pin. Perfect, we now have 12 millimeters of exposed pin, just what you wanted. Now this was a pretty typical pin install. Let me show you our VB24 turret. Now if you have a super speed lathe, then there's a six millimeter step on the surface where we press our pins in. So we're gonna wanna press our pins in, leaving 18 millimeters exposed. That's the 12 millimeters we need from this mounting surface plus another six millimeters to account for this step. Now, I've gone ahead and milled a, another pocket into my stock here, 18 millimeters deep. With this, we're gonna end up with 18 millimeters of exposed pin above this surface. And we're looking for that ideal 12 millimeters of exposed pin above our mating surface. Now, if you're tapping in these pins manually, you're gonna wanna go slowly. If you go too deep, there won't be enough pin exposed for our set screws to grab a hold of. And if you don't go in far enough, your pin won't be grabbing the turret at all. And when you tighten those set screws, it's just gonna wobble its way out. Okay, so with our pin properly installed, we can mount our radial tool holder and align it. After it's mounted, we're gonna snug just lightly that M10 bolt. We'll then mount a ground shaft into our collet. I'm using an extension. You can use a dowel pin or even a tool. From here, I'm gonna take an indicator on a mag base and indicate along the side of that ground shaft, seeing how straight this holder is. If it's not already straight, we can loosen and tighten these set screws against that 10 millimeter pin. Now, once you've gotten this straight, you'll want to lightly tighten both set screws against the pin. When done, you're gonna go ahead and finish tightening that M10 bolt on the side. So that's it. That's how we align our radial tool holders. Now, one last thing before we show you how to touch off your tools. What if you need to get these pins out? Well, there's some easy methods. The easiest way is just to grab an M6 by one bolt and thread it into that threaded end of your pin. Once that's done, we're gonna use an actual pin puller. Now you can find these on the internet for about 65 bucks. All we've got to do is lock it over the head of the bolt and slide. Now if you don't have an actual pin puller, you can just grab a socket, an M6 bolt and some washers. Place that over the dowel pin, tighten the bolt and it'll draw the pin right out of the turret. Well that's it. Let's go back to our machine and start setting some offsets. Well, we've made our tools straight, so now all we've got to do is touch them off. Now, typically for end mills used in live tool holders, we're going to touch them off along their center lines. Now, for an axial tool holder, this is pretty simple. All we've got to do is sweep in the tool holder with an indicator dialed in on the tool, and we've got our X and maybe our XY values. Now for the tip of the tool, we're gonna to touch that off along the Z axis, just like you would any other drill. 
radial tools can be a little more complicated. We can't reach the center line of that end mill. So what we're going to do is touch off on the tip of the end mill along the x-axis, kind of like a normal turning tool, and for the z-axis, we're going to touch off along the outer diameter of that end mill. Then we're going to shift our tool offset by the radius. Now, if we've done everything right, I should be able to command my tool to Z0 and have the center line of that end mill line up perfectly with the Z0 face of my part. Now, this final tip is for those of you that would like to touch off your radial live tooling using your ATP arm, your automatic tool presetter. And we can do this. Now, I've already brought my arm down and I've jogged my end mill just above and to the right of my probe tip. Now, I've created a program in memory and it's really got just one real line of code, M134P800. This is gonna start my live tooling with an M134 at 800 RPMs, P800. I'm using an M134, not an M133, because I want my live tooling to spin backwards, not forward. Okay, so with this program active in memory, I'm gonna to go to the IPS probing page. I'm gonna select manual cycle, because I've already jogged my tool above my probe. I'm going to use tool offset 9 because I'm probing tool 9. And here's the important part. I'm going to use tool tip direction 3. Now this is the same cycle we would use for an OD turning tool. It's going to come in from the right and come down in the X, which is going to work just great for our end mill. So I follow the directions on screen, press F4 to record output to a program. Now I just insert this code into my program right after my M134 and we're ready to run. Let me press cycle start and we'll see what it does. That looked perfect. It touched off on the side of the tool and the tip of the tool in the X. But remember, we touched off on the OD, the side of the tool, when we really wanted to touch off on the center, but that wasn't possible. So now we need to make an adjustment. We have to subtract the tool radius from our Z tool offset. So I'm going to go to my offset page, highlight tool 9 because that's the tool I used. And because I'm using a half inch end mill, I'm going to subtract 0.25 from my Z tool offset. This is going to put that radial live tool back on center instead of the left edge. Well, you should now be able to set up your live tooling with confidence. Now, for more information on live tooling, be sure to download the latest Haas lathe manual from the Haas DIY site diy.haascnc.com. Now we mentioned earlier that we're planning on making a bunch of tip of the day videos on live tooling topics. If you don't want to miss any of those and you don't, be sure to click on the subscribe button at the end of this video. That's it and thanks for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.